Catholic Answers Live. Any question you have about the Catholic faith, Jimmy Aiken is here with the Catholic Answer. Rebecca, you're up next in St. Louis on EWTN.com. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for your willingness to call and wait and come on the show. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a friend who was raised Catholic and who has who's a very faithful person, but she has some serious doubts about the Catholic faith. Okay. And she is looking to leave the church. Oh, no. And one of the, yeah, so one of the first big hang-ups she has that she's told me about is purgatory. Okay. And I was wondering if you had any biblical tools that I could use um, to give her some basis for um, having a reasonable faith in purgatory. I do. Um, but first, let me ask, are there particular, has she expressed to you why she's having a concern about purgatory because if I it may it may not be enough to just show her a biblical basis for it. We also may need to answer a, a concern that she's feeling about it. So has, she, has she done any of that? She said she said she doesn't see purgatory in the Bible. Okay. Well, if that's her only concern, um, number one, not everything has to be mentioned explicitly in the Bible. Uh, the Bible nowhere says that, and so if she's approaching the Bible. With that as a principle in mind, that if in order to believe something, you have to see it explicitly in the Bible, that's itself a problem. And so uh, we have a lot of stuff at Catholic.com that could help her with that. Uh, you might want to go to Catholic.com and type in Bible alone would be one phrase you could use, or sola scriptura, if you can remember mm -hmm. that, uh, because yep. that's the principle she's applying at that point. Now, if it's just a matter of purgatory in particular, well, uh, if you look in 2 Maccabees, there is a passage where you have, um, you have Judah Maccabee, he's a military leader and political leader in ancient Israel, and he and his men come across the bodies of some other soldiers who had fallen in battle, they died in battle. And uh, they were fighting for God, so they're fighting on the, you know, for Israel on the side of the true God, but they had committed sin. And this played a role in their falling in battle. And so uh, what Judah does is he, number one, takes up a collection to have a sacrifice offered at the temple in Jerusalem for these people. Uh, and that signifies that in some way, even in this life, we can help people after they've died. And he also has his men pray for those who had fallen in battle. And so that also signifies that in some way in this life, we can pray for those who have fallen, uh, who are no longer alive, and in some way help them. And so that presupposes the existence of a state where uh, people's journey to heaven is not yet complete. They're on their way to heaven, they fell asleep in righteousness, but uh, they nevertheless can still be helped by our prayers and and by having sacrifices made for them, like the modern sacrifice of the Mass. Now, depending on where your friend is at the moment, she may or may not recognize Second Maccabees as an actual book of Scripture, because in the Protestant community it is not commonly recognized as a book of Scripture, and so if she's been influenced by uh, some who are in the Protestant community, she may have doubts about, does this book belong in the Bible or not? And that raises a question, how do we know which books belong in the Bible? And if you, if you look at the situation carefully, uh, it's clear that the canon of the Old Testament includes some books that our Protestant friends don't recognize as Scripture. In fact, if you look in the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, it even contains a reference to this very book of 2 Maccabees, not the same passage, but the same book. Um, and again, we have a lot of stuff at Catholic.com that can help you with that. If you want to explore that with her, you can go there and type in uh, Maccabees, or you can type in Deuterocanonicals, uh, or you can type in Canon, and all of those will help pull up some resources on that. Suppose, though, that she says, well, I just I don't want to talk about Second Maccabees. I'm not willing to give that weight. Is there anything else you can show her? Yes. Go to 1 Corinthians 3, where Paul talks about how everyone must build on the foundation of Jesus Christ, but the quality of our work is going to be tested by fire. 
And if we've built well, then what we have survived, what we have built will survive the testing by fire and will receive a reward. But if not, if we've built poorly on the foundation of Christ, then what we've built will be consumed, but we ourselves will still be saved, but it'll be like escaping through flames, like escaping through a burning building. And so this shows that after we're dead, after our uh, salvation is already secure, because he says this person will be saved, but like escaping through flames, uh, after our salvation is secure, we're still going to be tested based on what we did with, in this life, and any remaining impurities are going to need to be purged. That's also something she could simply infer from the fact that we're not going to be sinning in heaven, we're going to be perfect, and that means all of the traces of sin and all of the remaining kind of gunk that's clinging to, us, clinging to us spiritually after this life is going to need to be purged away. The Church doesn't say it takes any particular amount of time, it, it could happen in a flash, but uh, that's going to be a transition we all need to have between being impure in this life and being totally pure in heaven. One last thing, Pope Benedict has an excellent discussion of this in his encyclical on Christian hope, Spe Salvi, that's S-P-E, new word, S-A-L-V-I. I encourage you to go look that up, it's awesome, and you can share that with your friend too. Rebecca, thanks for the call, that was a lot. You can uh, check out the podcast 24 hours from now, or uh, consult the Catechism for more biblical data. Thank you, Jimmy, thank you, Rebecca, this is our heartbreak, and we'll take it and come back in a moment on Catholic Answers Live.